for a second round. Imagine that Colonel Muammar Gaddafi's spokesman has said the former leader is still in Libya and in good spirits with a powerful army behind him. Musa Ibrahim told Reuters uh, that the fight is as far away from the end as the world can imagine and they are gathering their forces for the battle to come. His comments came as residents of Bani Walid were given two days to leave before an onslaught begins aimed at capturing one of former Libyan leader Colonel Gaddafi's last bastions and complaining of hardship and intimidation, residents of Bani Walid headed to nearby towns or started the 112 mile journey north towards the capital Tripoli in cars packed with children and possessions. So uh, I guess it seems like the worst is not over yet. Now this next bit has been a source of constant debate. The story that I'm going to give you is interesting. Audio tapes of Jackie Kennedy recorded months after the 1963 assassination of her husband, U.S. President John F. Kennedy, have been released for the very first time. And surprisingly, in the interviews with a White House historian, she says civil rights leader Martin Luther King was a terrible man. Imagine she said that and Jackie Kennedy also revealed how JFK was capping about Vice President Lyndon Johnson and some world leaders and she also recalls how her husband joked about the threat of assassination. How ironic is that? Jackie Kennedy opened her heart to White House aide Arthur Schessinger four months after JFK was killed on condition that the tapes would not be released until long after her death and just so you know Jackie Kennedy passed away in 1994 so I think that the buffer is quite long anyway. Now this one is a kind of a shocker the head of the UK Department of Immigration has said almost 100,000 asylum seekers lost by the shambolic immigration service may never be found at all. Now, officials have been unable to trace one in five of the 450,000 forgotten asylum cases, meaning they could remain in the UK forever. And the so-called legacy backlog of cases that were never completed was first discovered five years ago, with some dating back to the 1990s. And the Home Office promised to go through every file by the end of the summer. And that at that target, in fact, was met, but only because officials have concluded they cannot find 98,000 of them. And in these times when every country keeps a strict watch on immigration, thanks in part to terrorism, it is surprising to see this kind of complacency from the British, don't you think? All right, what's next? <coughs> now, if the legendary Michael Jackson owed you anything, you might be in luck. MJ's estate has generated more than 310 million dollars enabling executors to pay off dozens of approved creditors claims as well as Jackson's income taxes. Now, executors have also distributed a preliminary payment of 30 million dollars to Jackson's mother and children and to unnamed charities and in addition to this they also disclosed that Jackson's mother Catherine is putting the families and Sino compound up for sale and wants the executors to negotiate the purchase of a new residence for her and the children and now this is a one-time opportunity for fans to get their hands on some classic Jackson memorabilia okay now if you are a tech guru you'll find this next news very interesting Microsoft has unveiled the next generation of Windows the new operating system currently known as Windows 8 is the tech giants attempt to regain ground that it has lost to Apple of course and last year, Apple surpassed Microsoft as the world's most valuable company. However, it isn't the Mac that has Microsoft executives worried, though. It's the sheer dominance of the iPad. Now, the iPad hasn't skipped a beat since its debut last year, selling more than 25 million units in less than a year and a half. And more importantly, it has defined a whole new category of consumer devices. Now, Windows 8 is Microsoft's attempt to reclaim the throne. And this is tech wars in the real sense of the world. I have to get myself an iPad soon. Or a Samsung notepad. I don't know. One of those. Okay, now, um, something seriously funny. Spanish police have foiled an attempted robbery from a British woman after discovering a stolen diamond inside a man's stomach. How about that? Now, the woman's handbag, which contained cash and a diamond pendant worth 12,000 euros, 
was taken as she dined in a restaurant in Marbella and the suspects were caught four hours later with most of the loot but it took three days to retrieve the most valuable item, the diamond of course, after one of the men swallowed it. And a police spokeswoman said that it was retrieved in the simplest and most natural way. Now I know diamonds are forever but this one seems to have been places not worthy of the rock at all. So I don't know if that lady is ever going to wear it again. But it's still a diamond. Anyway, taking a short break and when we come back we have two very interesting foreign guests with us and um, yeah, stay for that. setting out on an adventure in the name of some cause that's close to their heart? Well, if you've been curious to know how this works, you are in luck because joining us on TMS this morning are John Clark and Daniel C. Hewson, if I said it right. Two friends who along with two other friends are cycling 28,000 kilometers from London to Melbourne, Australia with the aim to increase awareness and help raise funds to fight child trafficking. And a worthy cause, by all means, the trip will see the Ride to Rescue team, as they call themselves, ride through 26 countries over 15 months. And Pakistan happens to be their current stop. Give a warm Pakistani welcome to John and Daniel. Hello, good morning. Thank you. And yeah, assalamu alaikum. I'm sure you, you must have picked the salam part. Yeah. Of course, you've been through <laughs> Iran and a couple of Muslim Some of countries there, the well. language is similar to Iran, and but we haven't quite converted, so we still use Iran. The greeting in the Muslim countries is usually the same. Salam. Well, welcome, uh, guys. And uh, first of all, where are the other two? Because we introduced four, so what happened to the uh, other two? We had a bit of a disaster in Iran, so one of the boys has actually got a broken arm, and all he's right. waiting for us in New Delhi. So he flew, he didn't like he go on his... He caught some buses. Alright, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. that, that he's there in spirit then. Um, what's the motivation? Now of course we know that we, you guys set out with the mission, you know, to raise awareness, child trafficking and all, but is it close to your heart? Yeah, um, it started off when I was living in London. Uh, my visa had expired there, so it was time for me to go back to Australia. So I decided to ride back on okay. a bicycle and that would create some awareness, I'm sure. So uh, then we got the charity on board, uh, World Vision Child Rescue Program. So okay. um, as the trip's gone on and on, and we've been visiting these centres. It's really um, staying close to our hearts now, and we've really put a lot of work in. I know that even in Pakistan, you've gone to the SOS village as yeah. well, and some uh, public school as well. Yeah. I was, uh, we, we are going to show some pictures here. How was that experience? I'll, ta I'll talk about all the countries that you've been through, but let's stay on Pakistan a bit. Where all did you go? Um, yeah, so we visited the SOS children's mm. village. Um, now, it's, it's not so much related to child trafficking, but I suppose we're in a fortunate situation where we're, we're being invited to these other charitable causes. Mm. So we visited the village and uh, Osama, the, um, the director of the, of the program, showed us around and explained um, what they do there. And then um, two days ago, we visited the public school and that was incredible. Yeah. We're, we're blown away. It. Well, they opened their big gates and there was probably about 500 uh, students there to greet us. And they oh, had a, okay. a, lot, like a guard of honor. They were playing drums oh, and lovely. clapping and waving flags. It's pretty we, inspiring. Yeah, we didn't expect that at all. And we were lovely. signing autographs all day. <laughs> we're in a, a thousand photos with the kids. Amazing. Yeah. You know, Pakistanis are very warm people. I'm sure uh, you know you, you must have realized by now. Yeah. And you are coming from Islamabad. Yeah. yeah. So you've been to Islamabad as well. Yeah. Now I understand that uh, you know cricket is a passion. So every you know nation, cricketing nation that you go to, you you are planning like you're going to India after this as well. Yeah. So a little bit of cricket uh, thrown in there as well. Yeah. In Islamabad, we play 
played cricket twice with the local cricket club um, and got all the kids involved and then on the way down at the Grand Trunk Road everywhere would stop, we'd just bring out a ball and someone would have a bat and we'd be playing cricket with the locals in the street and it was so fun, they were so passionate about it and we could, we could, something we could share with them from that language barrier. I've, I've been going through your website and we are going to put it up on our, for our viewers on our Facebook page as well. It's very detailed about how the journey started and where all you went and how many countries have you been to John? This is so our 15th. 15th? Yes. So how does it work out? Before you set out you already plan, obviously you have a route plan where all you will yeah. go. Yeah, or no? through, through Europe we were winding around a little bit, heading to Istanbul and then basically from there onwards it was pretty straightforward um, through Iran and then Pakistan, mm. India. So um, there's not too many roads that we can choose here. Were you guys, um, when you speak about Iran and you know you remember the story of those hikers who were caught yes. in 2008. Uh, why would you even go near uh, that area when you know something like that? Um, you know this is just uh, yeah. from a personal point of view I want to know why would foreign hikers go uh, or you know in, with your cause go where there is some threat. This is the adventure I suppose and it's a, something that inspires us to go to these places where not many other tourists are going mm. um, and that's one way to raise the awareness. People see that we're going to Iran and they go what are they doing there and then they see what we're doing and that's where the, the awareness of the charity comes in as well I suppose. And, and, and Iran, like yeah sorry, uh, Iran ended up being one of the most incredible experiences as well because people are inviting us into their ha houses to stay and for dinner and things like that. So we didn't know what to expect yeah. either but we are blown away by the hospitality lovely, there. Lovely. So when you set out, uh, is this your first time in Pakistan? Yeah. yeah. So when you set out, you come to uh, this part of the world and of course I'm sure you must be very familiar with uh, a lot of European you know, countries and yeah. all. But when you come towards this part of the world, I'm sure you have some preconceived ideas, notions, things you have read. How does it fare with what you had already thought? Well, when we arrived in Islamabad, um, there was a lot of security towers, there was people with guns guarding the streets and that was, that really blew us away, like, to see this on the streets. Mm. Um, and then we kind of got comfortable with that, haven't we, mm. and it's just come the norm. Um, but we're not threatened by anyone, the mm. people have been lovely, there's been no security issues, so I think it, it is just um, maybe just... If the pictures of the people on your website is anything to go by, you met some very interesting people on the way, and yeah. uh, throughout the route actually, because I was looking at uh, a lot of, uh, you know, um, I don't know which countries it was, maybe it was Turkey or Iran, some scarved ladies also, everybody was, yeah. like, it seemed like everybody was out to help you guys. Yeah, I mean we've met um, people from all different parts of the community in most countries we've been through and um, whether they're business owners or kids or mm. athletes and things like that. Um, yeah, certainly and everyone's got an interesting story. Lovely. Which was the best uh, or the most interesting part or country that you, you know, uh, came along? Pakistan. Lahore. Uh, no, you're saying that <laughs> because you are in Lahore right now. But seriously. Um. I think the Grand. I think honestly, I think the Grand Trunk Road, and we all have said this prior to this interview, the Grand Trunk Road was a highlight because there was there was cars, there was donkeys, there was trucks, there was mm. motorbikes, of there course. was everything down this road, and it was so entertaining to weave in and out of it. So we did 300 kilometres, but it felt like you were playing a video game. Mm. It was so entertaining. But you've seen traffic here, so you know how it is. Yeah. It is a kind of it's uh, pretty wild. Yeah. yeah, it's a wild chase. Um, did you have to explain, uh, I'm sure, you know, you must have had to explain to people, a lot of curiosity among people, what, you know, why you are out on, on the bike, where are you guys going? Did a lot of questions come your way? Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> we come into some really small towns in between the big cities and they probably hadn't even seen any um, tourists or they can't speak English, so it's hard to tell people what we're doing and yeah, get mm. quite a few weird looks from people and mm. they're very curious. Because in Pakistan, as I don't know if you know or you don't know, but I'll tell you, people just don't go out and you know, they don't do anything like this for a cause. So it's very new and that is why we wanted to have you on the show as well. Because we keep talking about it. Um, people doing a lot of, taking up a lot of ventures to raise awareness and all. Um, I don't think, at least I don't think so, I'm not aware that if Pakistanis have done anything like that so far. Now, you said, and from what you said, uh, you were intending to 